Since the release of Half-Life 2 and Counter-Strike Source in 2004, the Source engine has been a staple of PC gaming for about 15 years now, and thanks to its ongoing support from its developer, Valve, high modability, and a thriving community spanning generations of gamers, we have a present day where you can hop on games over a decade old and still find a full server browser. It really is kind of incredible. Between the Half-Life games, Team Fortress 2, Portal 1 and 2, Left 4 Dead 1 and 2, Gary's Mod, Counter-Strike Source, Day of Defeat Source, and probably more I don't even know about, it actually seems like the Source engine itself, through its home platform of Steam, has formed one big community, instead of a lot of smaller ones for individual games. Now, I got in on all this a little bit late. See, when I was 12, I didn't have a PC capable of gaming yet, but I had heard about and was interested in a new little game called Portal and I got to play it in what was probably the most dated way possible. I went to Blockbuster and rented the orange box for Xbox 360. I got home and played it, and like most people, I loved it. But I also noticed something strange about it that, while actually making me even more fascinated by it, did make me a little hesitant to play it by myself. This game was creepy. Now, as many of you probably know, this is partly deliberate. That's the whole point of Portal, after all, that beneath the facade of this humorous little puzzle game is a sci-fi horror story that is hinted at throughout and explicitly reveals itself in the final level. As you make your way through the game, you'll probably start to feel a sense of isolation as you look up at those observation windows and think to yourself, if I'm being tested, where is everyone? Shortly after this, I got my first PC of my own and spent much of middle and high school playing these games. But the thing is, for me at least, this unnerving feeling of being alone but not quite is present in every Source game, and not just the ones where it's meant to be there. I was inspired to make this video a few months back by a post on 4chan's X-Board. It caught my attention with a picture of RP Downtown V2, a Gary's Mod map which I am very familiar with. The post read, Remember RP Downtown V2? I was on a nostalgia trip through Gmod the other day and downloaded it from the workshop. Through the comments, I learned of the rumor that the creator killed himself at some point and haunts the map. People have talked about seeing shadows in the sewers and ghosts and stuff. I'm not sure if the claim about the creator is true or for how long this rumor has existed, but I first heard about it only a few days ago. I've always felt really uncomfortable on this map, with the feeling intensifying in certain buildings for some reason. I've always found Source games in general to be quite unnerving, as I never feel alone on an empty map. This really resonated with me, as someone had put to words what I had felt but never really thought about for years. I hadn't played Gary's Mod in a long time, but curious about the haunting claims, I downloaded the map from the workshop and took a walk around. Although I didn't see any ghosts, that old unnerving feeling was back in full force. I'll just play a little bit without narration. Afterwards, let me know in the comments. Did you feel creeped out? And if so, do you have any ideas why? And whatever you did or didn't feel, do you have any memories of playing on the map back in the day? That last question is important for later.
Now, the first thing I noticed when I opened this map up was the ambient noises. Most custom maps are made up of assets from other Source games, most often Half-Life 2. As a game with a dystopian sci-fi setting, that often means a distant alien hum playing in the background of a given map. When played over a seemingly normal or even upbeat looking area, it's easy to see how this can create a sense of uneasiness. One that you probably wouldn't notice while playing with others, but is probably much harder to ignore when you're alone. Some maps take it a step further, having sounds of conversation and traffic which can fill out the atmosphere of a populated server, but just seems out of place when you can hear all this activity with no one around. Speaking of being alone, remember before when I asked if you have any memories of playing on RP Downtown V2, and whether or not you felt anything now? See, my thinking is this. I personally played a lot on this map back in the day. I remember running a bar with my friend that ended up being extorted by a gang for a chunk of our profits. We went to the police, who set up an outpost upstairs to monitor activity in our bar so that they could arrest them. This led to an amusing little back and forth when they went upstairs to set up and found my own little counterfeiting operation, but decided to let it go as the gang members were the bigger fish in town. The point of this story is that I associate many of these maps with activity and fun memories. To come back to it now, empty and with a now more obvious sinister ambient track, it creates a disconnect in my mind that something is wrong here, and that I'm not really alone. As I explored these old maps, I almost expected to see a mysterious message saying a player had joined, or to turn a corner and see someone watching me in the distance. So, in conclusion. While this phenomenon is not strictly unique to Source games, I believe more people consistently experience this in Source environments for two main reasons. Firstly, because of a wide variety of otherwise pretty upbeat maps using the ambient sounds of Half-Life 2 of all things. And secondly, the popularity, age, and continued use of these games means that a large number of people are playing a set of games which are both nostalgic to them and are either still present in their lives or can be easily revisited at any time thanks to Steam. With all this considered, it comes as no surprise that there's no shortage of creepypastas about players returning to old games to find something really wrong with them, and Source games in particular seem to be the perfect storm of nostalgia, widespread appeal, and inherent creepiness. <laughs>